Hi, welcome to this Core from Maths video on applying iterative processes. In this video, we're going to look at how to answer questions involving iterative processes. Before you watch this video, I highly recommend watching the iteration video on corporate maths also, and that can be quite useful. Okay, let's have a look at our first question. So our first question says, the number of penguins on an island at the start of year N is PN. That's P with a subscript N. And then it carries on, the number of penguins at the start of year 1 is 80,000. Given that PN plus 1 equals 1.2 times PN, work out the number of penguins at the start of year 3. Now we've got this iterative formula, and this iterative formula says that the number of penguins at the start of year n plus 1 is equal to 1.02 times the number of penguins at the start of year n. So what it's saying is to get the number of penguins in the next year, you times the number of penguins at the start of that year by 1.02. And you can just keep doing that, and it'll just keep on telling you the number of penguins at the start of the following year. So for instance, in this question, we know the number of penguins in year 1 is equal to 80,000. So if we wanted to find the number of penguins at the start of year 2, we would do 1.02 times by the number of penguins at the start of year 1. And that would be 1.02 times by 80,000. And when we do that, we get the number of penguins at the start of year 2 to be equal to 81,600. Now, if we want to find the number of penguins at the start of year 3, we would do 1.02 times by the number of penguins at the start of year 2. So it's going to be 1.02 times by 81,600. So the number of penguins at the start of year 3 would be equal to 83,232. And you just keep repeating that. And you could just keep on using this formula. So for instance, if we wanted to know the number of penguins at the start of year 4, we would do 1.02 times by 83,232 and so on. Then these, now in these iterative process questions, it can be quite useful to use the answer button on your calculator. Okay, So in this question, we were told the number of penguins at the start of year 1 was equal to 80,000. And we were told to find the number of penguins in the following year to multiply by 1.02. So we just want to keep on multiplying by 1.02. So if you type in 80,000 into your calculator and then press equals, it will appear like that on your display. Now we just want to multiply that by 1.02 and then to multiply by 1.02 again and again and again and again and so on to get the number of years that we want. So if we just type in 1.02 multiplied by ANS, that will then use that 80,000. So we would type in 1.02 multiplied by, and then you press the ANS button, that 80,000, and press equals, and it would tell us the number of penguins at the start of year two. So it would tell us the number of penguins at the start of year two is 81,600. Now, if we just press equals again, without having to type anything, because your answer now in your calculator is that 81,600, and you're about to do 1.02 times by ANS. So if you just press equals again, it will tell you your next answer. So it'll tell you the number of penguins at the start of year three. So you don't need to type in anything else in. You can just keep on pressing equals, and it will keep on telling you the number of penguins at the start of that next year. And that's it. So that ANS button can be really useful whenever you're using iterative processes. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says, the number of season tickets sold by an ice hockey team in a season is TN, T subscript N. And it says the number of season tickets sold in the next season is found by the iterative formula TN plus one, so the number of tickets sold in the next season, is equal to 0 0.9 times by TN, so 0 0.9 times by the number of season tickets sold in the previous season, plus 200. So in the first season, the ice hockey team sold 1,000 season tickets. And we've been asked to work out how many season tickets were sold in their fourth season. So we know that there's 1,000 sold in their first season. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the number of season tickets sold in the second season. And that's equal to 0 0.9 times by our 1,000, our number of season tickets sold in that previous season, plus 200. And when we do that, we find that we get 0 0.9 times by the number of season tickets sold in our first season, 1,000 plus 200. And we get that that's equal to 1,100 because 0 0.9 times 1,000 is 900 plus 200 would be 1,100. The number of season tickets in our third season would be equal to 0 0.9 times by our 1,100 plus 200. And that would give us 1,190. And finally, in our fourth season, if we want to find out how many season tickets were sold in that fourth season, we would do 0 0.9 times by 1,190 and then plus 200. And that would give us 
1,271 season tickets were sold in their fourth season. Now again, we could use our calculator for this. So if we wanted to use this on our calculator, what we would do is type in the number of season tickets sold in our first season, 1,000, and press equals, and it would come up with 1,000. Then the iterative formula is 0 0.9 times by that answer, that's the number we had in the previous season. So we're going to type in 0 0.9 multiplied by answer, ANS, plus 200. So 0 0.9 times by ANS plus 200. And now we can just keep on pressing equals and it will tell us the number of season tickets sold in the next season. So we had 1,100 in our second season. We had 1,190 in our third season. And we had 1,271 in our fourth season. And that's it. Okay, and our last question. Now in our last question, we've been told that our radioactive substance is decaying and the mass of the substance T years after it starts to decay is MT. And the mass of the substance uh, T plus one years after it starts to decay is given by, so here's our iterative formula and it says, the mass of the substance in the year T plus one is found by multiplying K, a constant, by the mass in the year T. And then we're told that we've got 200 kilograms of the substance and it starts to decay on the 1st of May, 2020. And in the following year, the mass was 176 kilograms on the 1st of May, 2021. And we've been asked to work out the mass of the substance on the 1st of May, 2024. So we've got our mass in our first year, we've got our mass in our second year, and we then need to find the mass of the substance in the year 2024. So what I would do in this question is, first of all, we want to work out our K. And we're told that the mass in the next year is equal to K times by the mass in the year before. So we know that the mass in the year 2021 will be equal to k multiplied by the mass in the year 2020. So it, the mass of the substance in the year 2021 is 176 kilograms and that's equal to k multiplied by the mass in the year 2020 which was 200. And if we divide 176 by 200 we will find k, our constant. And when we do that we get that's equal to 0.88. So that means what we're doing is we're multiplying by 0.88 each time to find the mass in the following year. So we've got mt plus 1 equals 0.88 times by mt. So we've got our iterative formula, which is the mass in the year t plus 1 is equal to 0.88 times the mass in the year t. And we want to find the mass in the year 2024. So we know 2021, so let's find the mass in the year 2022. So it's going to be equal to 0.88 multiplied by 176 kilograms. And that would be equal to 154.88 kilograms. Our mass in the year 2023 would be equal to 0.88 multiplied by 154.88. And that would be equal to... 136.2944 kilograms and finally our mass in the year 2024 will be found by doing 0.88 multiplied by 136.2944 and when we do that we get our mass is equal to 119.939072 kilograms or we could just write that it's equal to 119.939 kilograms to three decimal places. And that's it. Now we could have used our calculator for this one. We could have typed 200, press equals. Then we could have typed in 0.88 times by answer, press equals to get the mass in the year 2021, press equals again to get our mass in the year 2022, press our equals again to get the mass in the year 2023, and finally press our equals one more time to get the mass in the year 2024. And that's it.